Hey guys, what's up? It's Jacob. And Aaron, but not the host Aaron, the other Aaron. Yes, the other Aaron. And we are uh, starting a new Splinter podcast. And this one is about The Legend of Zelda. Ga- uh, games that we have played very much. Yes, well, I'm pretty sure both of us have played just about all of them. To some extent, yes. Yeah. I mean, aside from, say, the uh, <clears throat> studio games. The only ones I have not played are the Oracle ones. Mm. That's the only two I have not played. <clears throat> <clears throat> well, I have played the Oracle ones, so I can I can give some opinions on those. Mm. I'll need to play them. <clears throat> well, you're not borrowing my 3DS. I have my own. I know. I mean, they're, they're, they're on the 3DS. I'll probably have to get them. For the or, sake of this podcast. Or, or you can go mug Phil, because he's got them on, uh, like, cartridge. But they're on Game Boy Advance cartridges, and they're, like, uh, they're hacks. Oh. But it's the game. It's just on a Game Boy Advance cartridge. Instead well. of a Game Boy Color. So, I mean, that's pretty cool. But Anyway, so uh, the fr- what we're going to talk about today will be the original Legend of Zelda back on the NES. And uh, Do you want to tell them what we're doing, though, for this podcast? Mm, we can. I don't know. What do you want me to tell them? That we're going to eventually rank all of them? Eventually rank, and we're going to go in order talking about, like, in chronological chronological order talking about every Zelda games and technically knockoffs including so I guess whoa, including whoa 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 not, we're not talking about knockoffs because there's a lot of those we'll talk about spinoffs spinoffs but not knockoffs it, isn't the CDI technically a knockoff? no it's a spinoff so, so well, I mean it, it, they, were, they were licensed by Nintendo yes they? they are official Nintendo Nintendo licensed okay so not knockoffs but actual like like if you say spin-offs. knockoff you're, you, we're talking like uh Games that look like Zelda, but they're not. Yeah, that was that was a wrong choice of words. It's fine. It's fine. Nobody's listening. <laughs> you don't know that someday. <laughs> okay, you know Aaron's probably listening going, man, my podcast is better. <laughs> <laughs> so, we'll be, I guess we can start with the, the first Zelda game. The Legend of Zelda, released in 1987 on the Nintendo N- Entertainment. What? Nintendo Entertainment System in North America. Was it 87? It was 1987 in North America and 1986 in Japan. Okay. Because I was thinking 86, but, you know, I could... It was 1986 on the Famicom in Japan. Mm. Right, right. And this would be the first one, so... There's not really a standard to hold at this point. I wouldn't call it a masterpiece, but I would call it a classic. Yeah, no, it's still really fun to play today. Well, yeah. maybe not so much today. It's hard as hell, but it's fun hard. <clears throat> I mean, it's not as hard as some later entries, but we'll, later, get, to, we'll get to those when we get to Later entries soon, I would say. Yeah. Yeah, like a few years later. It, it's difficult fun. That's what I call Zelda 1. Yeah, the only, like, really hard thing was, like, just figuring out where to go. Because, mm-hmm. you know, you could, I got, I've played it a couple times, and for some reason I always blank on where, like, the second or third dungeon is, and I just... Go straight to, like, the fourth. I could never find the second one. The third one I could find pretty easily. It must be the second one that I skip, and I always find the third one. And... It's, uh... it's The Master Sword isn't in the first one. It's it's the uh, it's right next to the upgrade of the second sword, I'm pretty sure. It's, like, down a little bit. Yeah, it's, it's in the, uh... It's not the, the Lost Woods, but it's... It's the Green Snail Rock Maze. Yes. that That's where it is, and I always forget about that one, and I always end up... In the third dungeon, I always end up doing that, and then I'm like, oh, wait a minute, something's wrong here. Why am I at level three? I was just at level one. Yep. I, always, I love how, like, the those were the names of the dungeons back then, just levels. Yeah. Except I think the last one, level nine, is actually called Ganon. It, Ganon something? It might be. I, I don't remember. I, no, I think it is just called level nine. Yeah, I think, I think you're right. I think it is just... And it's in Death Mountain, I'm pretty sure. It's up in Spectacle Rock, yeah. Oh. Surrounded by Lionels. Oh, yes. Yes. Blue Lionels, I might add, so they're actually really tough. Yeah, and it's uh, not fun at all, <laughs> actually, because don't, don't you have to bomb a specific wall for that? To get into it, yeah. Okay. Yeah, because like, a lot of the dungeons are just hidden in plain sight. Like, one of them, uh, I think it's the 8th dungeon, you gotta burn a bush. It's just some random bush. I mean, it's not kind of, well, it is kind of random, but, like, it's in the middle of the road. To be fair, the game does give you a lot of hints. Some of them are less helpful than others, such as, does Dodongo dislike smoke? Yes. 
And Dig Dogger hates certain noises. Uh, and then where was the one about how you had to give the give the guy food in level seven? I think it was. Yeah, there was something like that. I don't remember what it was. But how are you supposed to know where to find that? <laughs> well, you know, you just gotta keep playing the game and. Uh, back then it was just like, hey, subscribe to Nintendo Power to find out. Yeah, get the power. Get Nintendo the power. power. The only d- dungeon I really struggled with in that game, like, it, it's hard, but it's beatable hard. Uh, ga- uh, level 9, I'm just going to call it, you know, Ganon's Tower, because that's what it's usually called in every game. Ganon's, Ganon's Rock. Ganon's Rock. Yep, <laughs> let's call it that. Um, that dungeon's hard as hell. It is. It's... Yes. They, they throw in a whole bunch of, uh... There's a reason you get a, a master key. Yeah. is because it's it's hard. But you do get the red ring in that one. Or the, ma- the magical red ring, which I think it yeah, doubles it, your defense again. Yeah, so all total, it, it, it you take a fourth of damage. But you need it. Yeah, especially since in Zelda 1, you didn't... Uh, it was either half heart or full heart. Like, you, you didn't get quarter hearts. I think even with the red ring, Ganon does one or two hearts against you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's he, tough. Yeah, and he teleports all over the stage like like a jerk. Yeah. I'll never beat the game like once or twice. I never did the second quest or anything. I tried to do the second quest. It was beyond my skill set. Because <laughs> I'm just like, mm, no, no, it's too hard for me. I'm, I'm baby man. This wasn't the first one I grew up with. So, when did you first play it? Because the first time I played it was on the, uh, the Wii Virtual Console. Um, because I... Got it there for like five bucks. It was not my first Zelda game. I will say that. Um, my dad bought it for me on the Game Boy Advance. Oh, so you got one of the uh, the NES collection games. Yeah, and he, he gave it to me. He's like, because he, my dad played it on the NES. And he's like, yeah, this was my favorite game. And I was like, yeah, it's pretty fun, but it's hard as hell. And he's dad, just like, you're wrong. It's hard. <laughs> I'm just like, how, how do you beat this? Like, I was just struggling super super hard with it and like i was on level two i think or level one and i was just getting my ass handed to me by uh bacoblins or moblins yeah i think it's moblins because i don't think bacoblins were in that game yeah like the, the part where you get the boomerang oh those aren't even those are like uh, dorians oh yeah <laughs> there was a whole, i don't remember there was a whole slew of zelda enemies from the first game that just got completely erased what what were the uh what was the name of the enemies that looked like rabbit's heads? Uh, Paul's voice. Paul's voice, and then mm-hmm. there's the vires, the jumping ones. Uh, vires were yeah the things that split into. I keys. wish those enemies would make a comeback. Uh, vires were actually they they came back in something. I want to say it was one of the Oracle games. He came back as a as a mini boss, and he made fun of you. I would really like those eight bit eight bit and sixteen bit enemies to come back, just to see what they would look like. I mean, the, 3D. I mean, they brought levers back, so that's cool. They did, yeah. But, like, buyers and, like, you know, just really old enemies. Let's see, yeah. Octoroks have continued. They've I think buyers might be the only enemy that's never been, like, portrayed in 3D. Yeah. Because uh, Paul's voice was portrayed in 3D. Yeah, uh, keys, keys have always been a thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, dead Hand, or not Dead Hand. Uh, Bubble, oh yeah, Bubbles are in the... Wall Masters. Um... Yeah, there's tons. I'm trying to think. Lionels were just brought back in Breath of the Wild. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I'm and thinking. Amazing. I'm thinking outside of the bosses, and even out, even inside the bosses, there's like three that haven't been brought over. Mm-hmm. Speaking of bosses, oh, P hats. Yeah, P hats are in the game. Mm-hmm. Speaking of the that. bosses, oh, they've never brought back Aquamentus for anything. Like he, uh, he was in some of the spinoff material. What's like, the what's the three headed dragon? Is that Gliok? Gliok, yes. Yeah, he's two headed, three headed, and four headed. Yeah, he gets more like every level. Of that. Mm-hmm. I think he's the first one. No, he's not the first boss. Oh, Aquamentus is the first boss. Oh, oh yeah, he's. I I I, I, I think Gliok two head might be the second boss. Yeah, it's two then four. I, no, I know you fight it three times. Yeah, you fight it three times. Uh, yeah, and then the third boss is uh, Dodongo, mm. the Dodongo pair. Goma just died by one arrow. I remember that. <laughs> yeah, Goma shows up in the sixth dungeon. You're like, oh man, this is gonna be a fight, and then Goma dies. And by one arrow. <laughs> Technically, they weren't arrows; they were rupees. What? Your arrow count was. Oh rupees. yeah, that's right. I remember that. <laughs> there was no arrow count. There was just you were firing rupees off a bow. 
They probably just didn't have any way of making arrows. Yeah, it was probably they couldn't uh, implement it in a way. Yeah, memory shortage or something like that. Because you only have like you only had two weapon slots. Mm-hmm. But yeah, that was my first way of playing it. That wasn't my introduction to Legend of Zelda though. That was my first introduction to 1980s 8-bit Zelda. Uh, but I was on the first one, and then I come back, and my dad's just having his version of nostalgia playing this. He gives it back to me, and I'm on the 8th level, and I'm just like, holy shit, this game just got really hard. Like, way harder than Dad, I was I couldn't even be level 1. Why aren't you leaving on level 8? Because then, then he got stuck again, and he couldn't beat it. Yeah, them Dark Nuts are assholes. Especially, oh, yeah. Especially in level 8, because like, you gotta just hail them, and then they just... They turn around and they look at you and they're like, hey, guess who's dead? It's you. It's like, you're like right behind him getting ready to stab him. And they're like, and like I think around. somebody's behind me. And then you have a sword in your face and you're just like, shit. Oh, the the ropes. Yeah. They're, they're like the snakes. I don't think they've ever had, they've done those enemies either again. They were in uh, Spirit Tracks. They were? I'm pretty confident ropes were in Spirit Tracks. They were at least in... They were in one of the DS games. I'm pretty sure. But they might not have been called ropes. They might have just been called snake. I remember, like, those things that would, like... I think they were like-likes, though, because they would just take your rupees. Yeah. Yeah, I'm pretty sure those were like-likes. Yeah. Like-likes uh, were, were there, and they have returned several times. Even in games they weren't in originally, that, in remakes. But, yeah, that was pretty much my introduction to it. Did How, was you, how were you introduced to it? Uh... So, it wasn't my first Zelda game. It wasn't even like my top, my first five. But like I said, I, I was, I got it on the Virtual Console, and I think Brawl had a demo for it, like a like a three minute demo that you could play. Mm -hmm. And I I just bought it because I'm like I want to play all the Zelda games. So in like 2010, I just ponied up for, for that and Zelda two and whatever other ones I could get on the on the Wii. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was immediately disenchanted. <laughs> like I'm sitting there playing. I'm like, I can't play this. I'm sorry. I didn't even like uh, Link to the Past as a kid. This one is more archaic than Link to the Past. But then I, I eventually just said, you know what? No, I spent five bucks on this. I'm going to finish it. Right. <laughs> and uh, I think after I finished it the first time, I I immediately went back for a second playthrough. Of the first quest, not the second. Because <laughs> I'm like, I'm not playing the second quest. I will just play the first quest again, thank you. Yeah, I only ever beat it. I think I beat it, like, once, maybe twice. I, it doesn't have a lot of replay value. It really doesn't. Like, the second time I played it, like, after knowing where everything was, it's like, okay, well, I can just speed through this now. And it's not impressive, but I did beat it in a day. <laughs> I, I really tried to play it blind, but there's really, like, some things you gotta, like look up yeah there's also a room where you can just permanently lose a heart piece or a heart container where at it's in one of the dungeons and you can you, you talk to the guy and he's like you could either uh oh yeah you could take a bottle of potion you can take a potion or you can take this heart container yeah oh like, you didn't take the heart container well it's gone like it's obvious which one you should take and i think there's well i think there's also a guy who just steals a heart container from you like, I think he's in one of the dungeons, and if you do something, he just takes it from you. He's like, you don't deserve this. This is mine now. Wow, that's very punishing. <laughs> I'm pretty sure even, uh... But I think it's only if you attack him. Like, I think it's like the old man or something. I think Miyamoto said that he couldn't even beat Zelda 1. That's wild. <laughs> Not Miyamoto. It, it was some other Zelda developer. I, I don't know if it was Miyamoto or somebody else. Hmm. Like, I'm not... I'm not gonna claim to be the best Zelda player of all time because I'm clearly not. Not I, I'm very I'm very mediocre at Zelda. Like I can I'll finish the game, but it'll still take me some time. But like, if I can beat Zelda, I like to assume a lot of other people could. It's not impossible. Like for me, with with finding stuff, I, I knew where to find the the upgraded sword. The first one is mm -hmm. behind the waterfall. And that, but I didn't know you there was a heart container requirement. Yeah, it's like eight. I think it's eight for the first one and sixteen. Not sixteen. No, because sixteen is the max. I think it's twelve. 12 yeah, and 13. eight, eight, and twelve. And then yeah, you get the magic sword in the graveyard. 
Mm-hmm. After you've pushed every single grave and summoned every guinea. Mm-hmm. Because it's just stuff that you randomly find. Like yeah, you, it's literally a game that's built for uh, secret hunting. Let's see. Uh, <clears throat> anyway, uh, going back to the bosses, is I kind of want to talk about them. Some of them were pretty original. Some of them were less so. Like, uh, like Aquamentos. Mm-hmm. Just, you're walking through the dungeon, and boom, big-ass dragon. I also love how you could hear them in, like, the room. Oh, yeah, time. that that's, that's pretty cool. Like, they just make, like, really weird noises. You can hear them stomping around a few rooms down, and then you're like, oh, I don't want to go in there. And then you go in there, and it's just dragon that you punch in the head. <laughs> you're like, ur, ur, and it's just a fucking goma that you shoot one time, and it's dead. <laughs> Let's see, uh, Dig Dogger, an enemy that has not come back in, like, anything. I, I think it's been replaced by the Moldorms, essentially. Oh, yeah. But... You was just like a like a circle, right? With a circle with spikes, mm-hmm. and you had to play the recorder in his room, and then he's like, "Oh no, recorders! I hate that." I know you exactly know. what you're talking about. And he just stops, and you just slash him up. Uh, the Dodongo, is it three Dodongos? One of the rooms has three Dodongos. I remember. Is that a rematch, or is that the? Because uh... Uh... I think the boss fight is only two Dodongos, and then in Gan's Rock. You fight a room. Of, you go into a room with three. Dude, like it's not even that. That place is just flooded with whiz robes. Oh god, whiz robes are the worst, and especially in that game. I mean, at least they at least they teleport on a grid, and they can only fire in one, horizontal one or vertical. Like yeah. they don't diagonally fire at you, but still, just making sure you can get to the to them before they teleport away, like jerks. It's the rooms that have whiz robes and bubbles. Yeah. Those are the worst. Don't bubbles curse you and you can't swing your sword? You. They don't hurt you, they just curse you. Yeah, and then there's some rooms where, like, there's literally no chance of you avoiding the bubble because it's just a hallway. <laughs> like, it's yes. just a hallway of blocks. Yep. And you just gotta just... And they're fast. You just gotta take it and be like, well, I got hit by the bubble and, well, I guess... I guess I don't get to swing my sword anymore. Yep. Let's see, uh... Man, I really don't have too much more to say about Zelda 1. Because there's not really any backstory to it. I mean, there's, there's an instruction manual, and they spelled Ganon wrong. There's two N's, and they pretty... Back then, there was just the Triforce of Power and Wisdom. Mm-hmm. I don't even think they say that... Wait, no, they do say that Ganon has a Triforce of Power. Mm-hmm, and that's why Zelda broke the, the Triforce of Wisdom yeah. into, into 8. And That's why he had, drops it when you kill him. And then had the man who uh, who collected the eight pieces deliberately take that to Ganondorf. Or yep. not Ganondorf, Ganon. Uh-huh. Yeah, it was great. <laughs> like, just, hey, Ganon, if you kill me, you can have the Triforce of Wisdom like you wanted. If you had to rank it out of ten, what would you give it? Well, that's not really what we're doing. Well, I mean, if, I, you, if, you, if you did, uh, we could do that. If I had to rank it... I'd probably give it a six. I'd probably give it a seven. I only say six because, like, as unfair as it is to say, it's not the best 2D Zelda game. It's not even close. It's just classic. But, like, looking at other stuff on the NES, Zelda 1 was, like, it's like a unique thing. Back then, you would say, hey, this probably is one of the best games on this console. Like... Yeah, because it was a, it was like a full adventure. There were save slots, it's save slots. That was wild in video games back then. They yes, didn't have those. They had password systems, just like a pause button was. Yeah, that was crazy too. Yes, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I, I'd have to say it's above average, but not like much. Not today. Like it, it doesn't. It holds up today, but it's like. I've heard people say if you want to experience classic Zelda, classic top-down 2D Zelda, you got to play Link to the Past. I would prefer Link to the Past over the first one. I mean, Link to Link to the Past does polish literally everything that Zelda One did. Yeah. But again, I have to say it's above average because it actually tells you backstory too. Yeah, backstory that was <laughs> like changed four times. Yeah. So. Uh, uh, like I said we're, before, we're going to uh, rank all the Zelda games in order. 
Obviously, this is the first one, so... We had to it's, start it somewhere, it's just like our, the series did. It's already number one. It's the top Zelda game we've played so far. Mm-hmm. As of this recording. Uh, anything else you want to say to close us out, or...? Nope. Alright, well, this has been The Legend of Corncast. I love that name. See ya. See ya next week.